After a tragic event that took the life of his father, a young werewolf prepares to become the leader of his pack, but on the day of his coronation something totally unexpected happens. Today we're going to recap the story of the 2020 movie, 100% Wolf. During a fire in the town, a group of werewolves break into the house and save one of the victims while Freddy Lupin watches their every move hidden behind a bush. Realizing that someone else is trapped inside, Freddy runs towards the fire to rescue them, but his hair catches fire and his father orders him to go home. Flashheart didn't know he was being followed by his son and says that he will only be able to take part in rescue missions when he becomes a wolf. He then discovers that the boy used the moonstone to find them and asks Freddy to keep it safe while he accompanies him on another mission. That night, as usual, the group comes together to carry out rescues and help the people of their town in any way they can. This time, however, Freddy is allowed to accompany them and discovers that his pack hates all dogs. Just as dawn is about to break, the group splits up and Flashheart carries his son home on his back. The pair then take the forest path to avoid being seen and Freddy almost gets run over by an ice cream truck. Luckily, Flashheart manages to save him in time, but when he sees the boy being captured by a wolf, the driver decides to get out of the vehicle to help him. Immediately, the werewolf runs away with his son and Freddy says that he will make his father very proud, because one day he will become the strongest wolf he has ever known. Upon hearing this, Flashheart claims that it is the spirits of the moon that decide what kind of wolf the boy will become and suddenly they are both surprised by Crip's arrival. When he finds out that Freddy is okay, the man is relieved, but panics when he sees that he is accompanied by a werewolf. Terrified, Crip tries to scare off his enemy with some karate moves, but ends up falling off a cliff and is saved by Flashheart. However, in trying to free himself from the wolf's clutches, Crip ends up causing them both to fall. Luckily, he manages to hold onto the rocks and save himself, but Flashheart disappears into the lake. Worried about his father, Freddy starts screaming for help and his uncle shows up to save him. Immediately, Hotspur takes the boy home and, on the way, he ends up losing the Moonstone, which is later found by Crip. Days later, all of Flashheart's friends and family gather to say goodbye to him, as they believe the pack leader is dead. However, Freddy believes that his father is still alive somewhere and can't accept that he's gone. Until the boy grows up and becomes a wolf strong enough to lead, Hotspur takes on the role of pack leader. Six years later, all the werewolves in town gather at the Lupin Mansion to watch Freddy's transformation. However, his uncle isn't happy at the idea of being stripped of his leadership position and claims that the boy doesn't have the strength to lead the pack. Upon hearing this, Lady Hightail recalls that Hotspur was unable to recover the Moonstone and the man justifies it by saying that Crip is equipped with the best wolf detection equipment. Every time his pack approaches him, he ends up being attacked with toxic silver powder and tranquilizer darts. Still, Lord Hightail thanks him for his work, but says it's time to make way for Freddy to lead. When the young man appears, Lady Hightail begins the ceremony and, upon coming into contact with the moonlight, all the wolves transform. However, when it's Freddy's turn to complete his metamorphosis, to everyone's surprise he turns into a poodle. Terrified, the wolves try to understand what is happening and Hotspur is happy to know that he will have a chance to continue in his leadership position. He claims that the boy has been cursed for losing the Moonstone Ring and Lord Hightail says that Freddy has until the next moonrise to prove that he is a true wolf. Otherwise, he will be banished from the pack and another leader will be chosen to replace him. That night, when he returns to his room, Freddy is visited by his Machiavellian cousins who capture him and dye his fur pink. The pair then put a silver collar around his neck, so that he won't be able to return to his human form. However, while trying to remove that necklace, Freddy ends up rolling downstairs and accidentally traps his cousins inside the attic. While trying to think of a way to become a real wolf, the young man comes to the conclusion that if he can return the Moonstone to the pack, his curse will be broken. So he decides to leave the mansion and, after jumping over the wall, ends up falling into the back of a truck that takes him to the city center. However, during a turn, the youngster ends up in the street and is almost run over. Seeing the dog in danger, Batty appears to save him and guides him to the sidewalk. However, instead of thanking her for her help, Freddy begins to belittle Batty for being a dog and claims that he is a human. Seeing that the poodle isn't doing too well, the dog leaves and it doesn't take long before Freddy gets into trouble with the dogs in the neighborhood. At this point, he realizes that he needs help to survive on the streets until he gets the Moonstone back, so he decides to go and ask Batty for help. While they're talking, they're both being chased by two hunters who want to arrest them at the city shelter, but the dog is used to dealing with these guys and manages to distract them. Freddy watches intently as her new friend shows those big guys who's boss and easily manages to defeat them with her wits. After getting out of that alley, Freddy tells her that he has to find Crip, the ice cream truck guy, and Batty promises to help him on this mission. 
But first, he needs to learn how to act like a dog so as not to arouse suspicion, and so that night, the boy receives his first lessons. He learns to use his nose to detect territories marked out by other dogs and discovers how to play fetch with sticks. Batty then teaches him to ask strangers for food in the street and, while scratching in an alley, they are almost caught by the wolves. When those creatures leave, Batty teaches Freddy his last lesson and says that werewolves are evil. She says that, according to the other dogs, those monsters run around the streets at night pretending to help people, but the truth is that they are people who sacrifice puppies to the moon god. Upon hearing this, the boy tries to defend his family, but realizes that if he tells the truth Batty will never help him. So he pretends that he hates those wolves too and, after a few minutes of walking, finally finds Crip with his ice cream truck. The man became known throughout the city for being a madman who believed in werewolves, but was never able to prove the existence of these creatures. When he arrives at the entrance to the hideout, Freddy is caught on the security camera, but as he doesn't look like a wolf, he isn't attacked. So the dog manages to get through the bars and, after dodging all the terribly scary fantasies the man keeps inside, he finally manages to find the ring. However, after catching it, Freddy discovers that the jewel is just a cheap replica and ends up being captured by Crip. At that moment, he notices that the ice cream man is wearing the ring and tries to grab it, but can't get free. Confused, Crip realizes that the moonstone has begun to glow and that this only happens in the presence of a werewolf. To find out what this creature is, the man takes it to his secret laboratory and begins to scan it. At this point, Freddy tries to communicate with him and tell him that he's human, but all the ice cream vendor hears is barking. Through his analysis, Crip discovers that the creature has human, dog and wolf DNA, which leaves him intrigued to find out who owns the animal. Suddenly, he hears some knocks on the door and, on opening it, Batty manages to get in. The dog quickly tries to free her friend and almost ends up being captured. However, she manages to turn the tables and uses the lab's equipment to attack the human. While Crip is trying to dodge the lasers, Freddy manages to break free and steals the ring. The dogs then run away and the man discovers that the dog belongs to the Lupin family. After saving her friend, Batty goes home and the boy discovers that she has been abandoned. She tells him that she had seen all her siblings adopted and was left alone in the pet shop until the day she was thrown out because no one wanted to take her home. Then Freddy decides to tell the truth and says that he belongs to a family of werewolves. The boy says that if he can't turn into a wolf by the next full moon, he'll be expelled from his pack and that's why he had to steal the ring. Suddenly, the hunters appear and capture Batty. When Freddy tries to attack them, one of the men also manages to capture the animal and both are taken to prison. Once there, the pair meet the commander and her dog. The woman then orders him and Batty to be taken to the beauty salon for a bath. They then take part in a photo session which will be forwarded to the list of lost animals. That morning, Hotspur is in his car when he is surprised by the arrival of Crip. After stealing a strand of his mustache, the man is led away from the vehicle and, by chance, while looking at the list of lost dogs, Hotspur comes across a photo of his nephew. Meanwhile, Batty and Freddy are taken back to their cells and meet their new companions. Among them are Twitchy, the smallest and angriest dog in the pack, Hamish, the psychologist and Bruno, a dog with a passion for balls. As soon as she arrives in the cell, Batty begins to think about an escape plan and wonders if it is possible to escape through the underground passage. However, Hamish reveals that this is where the most dangerous dog in the shelter lives and Twitchy says that it's impossible to get out alive. He says that his group has tried everything to escape, but they always end up being caught and taken back to prison. However, Batty says that she will think of an escape plan in the next 24 hours and Freddy becomes desperate at the thought that he won't be able to return home until the next full moon. Just then, his uncle appears and says that the dog belongs to his family. When he sees him, Freddy feels relieved, because he knows he'll be taken back to the Lupin mansion. But instead, Hotspur steals the moonstone that the boy has retrieved and orders the commander to take him back to his cell, along with the other dogs. Meanwhile, Crip is in his lab doing DNA tests to investigate whether Freddy is related to Hotspur and discovers that they are both werewolves. At lunchtime, when the guard shows up to feed the dogs, Batty has an idea to escape and uses a piece of bone to stop the gate from closing. Twitchy then goes under the bars and pushes the button in order to open the door. However, he accidentally presses the wrong button and sets off the security alarm. At that moment, the commander and Cerberus appear and Freddy takes the blame for what happened. Before being punished, he approaches the woman and tries to hit her with a urine jet, but is caught by Cerberus and ends up wetting the whole cell. Furious, the commander orders the dog to be thrown into the dungeon along with the beast and her friends are worried about him. When he gets home, Hotspur finds Panny and the housekeeper asks him if he has managed to find his nephew. The man then claims that he hasn't found him, 
but knows that he will be home that night to prove that he is worthy of being a leader. However, when Hotspur enters the mansion, Panny spots Freddy's photo and immediately decides to go after him. At this point, Batty is trying to think of a plan to free her friend, as she knows he was sent to the dungeon for trying to save her. So she enlists the help of the other dogs to reach the ventilation shaft and they all manage to escape through the tunnels. While walking through the cramped place, Batty spots the commander next to a large machine and discovers that she intends to turn all the dogs into wigs. When the equipment is ready, the woman calls Hotspur and tells him that all he has to do to start the project they have built together is press the button. While trapped inside the dungeon, Freddy hears the sound of chains moving and starts screaming for help, believing he is about to be devoured by the beast. However, to his surprise, the creature says he doesn't eat dogs and is confused when he sees the Lupin family symbol on the dog's collar. At that moment, Flashheart realizes that the poodle is actually his son and refuses to believe that he isn't 100% wolf. After hugging him, the wolf says that after falling off the cliff, he crawled through the forest until he reached the road, where he was captured by the hunters and locked in that cage. The werewolf says that even though he was chained up, he didn't give up hope, because he knew his family would look for him. However, when Hotspur found him, instead of freeing his brother, he imprisoned him in wolf form with a silver bracelet. Since then, Flashheart has been locked away in that dark place. After telling his sad story, the wolf tries to understand why his son has turned into a poodle and Freddy says that dogs are the kindest and most caring creatures he has ever met. Suddenly, his friends come sliding down the pipe and fall on top of Flashheart. Believing the creature to be a threat, the quartet unite to attack it and, upon hearing the battle cries, the commander sends the guards into the dungeon. At that moment, Freddy manages to break up the fight and says that the wolf is actually his father. When he discovers that a pack of dogs has gone there to save his son, Flashheart realizes that those animals aren't as bad as he thought and Batty tells him that the commander has built a machine to turn them into wigs. Immediately, Freddy remembers seeing the commander and his uncle talking and realizes that Hotspur has the control to start the machine. Then, with the help of the dogs, Flashheart manages to break free of the chains and the group escapes through the tunnels. However, before they could escape, the commander and her bodyguards found them and managed to surround them. Suddenly, Panny appears on her motorcycle and rushes at her enemies. During the fight, she asks Freddy to run to the mansion to stop her uncle from becoming the leader of the pack. Once everyone has made it through the ventilation shaft, Twitchy decides to stay behind and help Panny defeat the enemies. During their escape from the tunnels, the group ends up in the subway and gets a ride out of there. When he comes into contact with Sunlight, as he is no longer wearing the silver collar, Freddy transforms into a human again and has to steal some clothes on the way. That night, Lord Hightail announces that since Freddy didn't show up for the ceremony, his pack is without a leader. Therefore, the group will need to summon the Moon Spirits to choose a new commander. Just then, Hotspur appears and says that he has found the Moonstone, so he is worthy of taking over as leader of the pack. He then turns into a wolf and is followed by the other members of his pack. On his first day of reign, Hotspur presents the surprise he has been preparing for the last few months and shows off the machine that will destroy all the dogs in the city. Then, just as the madman is about to press the button, Freddy and his friends show up and the boy manages to stop him. Soon afterwards, Flashheart appears and all his family are happy to see him, except for his traitorous brother. While the wolves try to figure out what's going on, Crip appears in his ice cream truck equipped with silver guns and starts shooting. Just then, Flashheart is hit and collapses. Immediately, Freddy runs towards Crip while the dogs take his father to safety. When he sees Freddy, the ice cream man recognizes him and says that everything he has done in recent years has been to try to avenge the boy's death. While the man is distracted, Hotspur takes the opportunity to attack him and ends up dropping the remote control that will activate the machine. Quickly, Freddy runs to get him and manages to steal the control. Meanwhile, Panny is in the pet shop freeing all the dogs and trying to defeat the commander. However, when Hotspur presses the button, the machine is activated and Twitchy ends up being sucked into it. At that moment, the dog directs all his fury towards saving himself and destroys the device from the inside, causing a huge explosion. Realizing that his plan has fallen through, Hotspur is furious and attacks Freddy. While trying to escape, the boy accidentally frees his cousins from the attic and manages to gain time to climb onto the roof. The problem is that his uncle continues to pursue him and Freddy sees no choice but to transform himself, knowing that in human form he will never be a match for the enemy. Seeing that his friends and family believe in him, the boy feels even more encouraged and, when he is touched by the light of the moon, he transforms back into a poodle. Despite his fragile appearance, Freddy discovers that he is as powerful as any other wolf and, using his roar, knocks Hotspur off the roof. The next day, the commander and her staff are arrested and all the dogs in town are welcome at the Lupin Mansion. 
Now that Flashheart is back in charge of his pack, Freddy doesn't have to worry about being the leader and has the opportunity to learn from his father how to become a strong and courageous wolf. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.